In order to be able to put in place a reliable monitoring and evaluation system, a very useful tool is the result chain, as it introduces structure in the design, implementation and analysis of the process. It is a linear representation of the theory of change. For each of the segments of the result chain, one should define result statements with clear goals, as well as how every statement should be measured. Result statements distinctly define each stage of the result chain. For instance, which inputs will be utilized, which activities will be carried out, what are the main expected results of the program, and so on. On the other hand, measurement is a key part of monitoring and evaluation as it facilitates evidence-based learning and decision-making. As the famous quote of Peter Drucker says, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. We measure the result statements by defining indicators which allow assessing whether the desired change has been reached or how far from reaching it the policy actually is. We define indicators as impartial measures of reality or phenomena that are verifiable and repeatable and not subject to interpretation. They help us reduce a large amount of information to a very few important elements. Here are some alternative yet similar definitions provided by leading international institutions that are useful to consider. USA defines an indicator as a variable whose purpose is to measure change in a phenomenon or process. While OECD describes an indicator as a quantitative or qualitative factor that provides a simple and reliable means to measure achievement, to reflect changes connected to an intervention, or to help assess the performance of the development sector. It is not easy to find an ideal indicator that perfectly proxies the change that we are interested to capture. In fact, not everything that is quantitative and that we can count is representative of the change we are interested in. And not everything that counts can be counted. Key characteristics of good indicators are Indicators should be valid, meaning it should represent an accurate measure of a behavior, practice or a task. Indicators should be reliable, meaning it should be consistently measurable over time in the same way by different observers. Indicators should be precise, clearly and unambiguously defined. And indicators should be also timely, as it should provide a measurement at time intervals relevant and appropriate in terms of program goals and activities. We need indicators at all levels of the result chain if we want to measure change in an effective way, and they should be defined before the start of the policy implementation in order to facilitate proper monitoring and evaluation. Let's provide a simple example. As we know, access to finance is one of the key impediments of a flourishing entrepreneurial ecosystem. So we will look at the policy program set up by the government that intends to address the startups issue to access external funding with the major goal of improving startups innovative output. In particular, we will look at the example in which the government decided to directly provide the funds to early stage entrepreneurial ventures by establishing a governmental venture capital fund. We will use the results chain as an anchor to break down the specific policy program. First, we shall define result statements for each step. We can define inputs as the financial resources allocated for the investment into young ventures. We can describe activities in terms of setting up a governmental venture capital firm which selects the most promising startups to be funded and eventually invested in them. We can express outputs of the program as startups receiving the funding. Then we can define outcomes of the policy program as startups focusing more on innovative activities. And finally, we can define impact as the creation of more innovative startups. Once we have the result statements defined, let's try to identify appropriate ways to measure them. We will follow the same sequence. We can express the inputs of the policy as the amount of money allocated for financing startups throughout the program. Second, we can proxy the activities as the number of funding calls and pitching events organized by the governmental VC company. Third, we can measure the number of finance startups to quantify the outputs of the program. Next, we can measure the intended outcome of the program as the percentage of revenues startups invest in R&D. And finally, we can measure the number of patents filled by the funded startups as a proxy of startups' innovativeness. One more important point. The policy implementation process is commonly complex and long. For instance, while the outputs can be achieved in short term, the outcome, such as in our case, startups increasing their investments in R&D, can take one to three years, while we can hope that the intended impact of the reform on the innovative output of the startups will materialize in the span of three or even five years.
we need to keep the time frames in mind when monitoring the implementation and decide the frequency of measuring the indicators accordingly. Hence, we should populate two more columns for each of the indicators, one stating the baseline level at the beginning of the policy program and the other the target level at the appropriate time point of the policy program process. Here are a few simplistic numbers. We can assume that no governmental resources were devoted to direct funding of startups, no governmental venture capital existed and thus no startup received any funding from the government before the policy program, leading to the first three baseline levels equal to zero. Then we can assume that before the policy an average startup had invested around 10% of its revenues into R&D, which had led to around 0.8 patents per startup on average. Then we can define target levels for each stage for the next four years. Government established a 10 million euro venture capital fund that plans to invest 2 million euro by the end of the first year of activity, 5 million euro by the end of second, and 10 million euro by the end of the third year. At that time, the venture capital firm plans to invest in up to 100 promising startups based on up to 15 events and follow-up meetings with the selected startups. By doing that, the policy program intends to yearly increase the average percentage of revenues invested in R&D by the funding startups from 12 to 14 to 18 and finally to 25%. In turn, the government expects that the program will have a positive impact on the innovativeness of startups and increase the average number of patents per company to four. All right, so once we have the result statements defined and corresponding indicators set up, as well as the baseline and target levels established, we can meaningfully monitor the progress and react timely to possible discrepancies from the plan. Eventually, this arrangement will also facilitate evaluation of the policy based on factual evidence.